This scale is medication administration. Okay, before we start the scale, I want to talk to you about the MAR, the Medication Administration Record. If you look here, we've got the patient's name here, we've got their date of birth, we have their patient or medical records number, then we actually have their room number. We also have all the medications they need, we have the date across the top where we would actually be initially. As we go through here, if you remember in your book, you've got the six rights. You need to be concerned with the right patient. If you look here, the right drug, the right dose, the right route, and the right time. And then the sixth right is the documentation when you finish giving the medication. So I'm going to go through a few of these because there's a couple errors on this MAR that I want to talk to you about that you need to always be careful about. Okay, the first one talks about Practidige. That's the name of the medication. The strength is zero, and notice that leading zero, 0 0.25 milligrams. Then you've actually got the um, route, which is PO by mouth. Then you have, it talks about special precautions, hold of the uh, pulse is less than 60 um, beats per minute. And then you've got the actual time it's due. Okay, that's the way a medication should be actually set up for you. You should also have the dates over here, and nobody should have signed in your spot. Like, I'm going to give the 0900s in just a little bit. Nobody has signed in my spot, so supposedly no one has given that medication. If someone had signed in my spot helping me out and maybe they gave the medication for me and I didn't realize it, hopefully I would be alerted because I would have read all of this information here and then went over and looked under the date and the time that I was actually going to give medications. Now, I've highlighted in yellow some things you have to look out for. The next order says Tagamet, and what it's got here is Tagamet 1 capsule PO TID AC. Okay, Tagamet is the drug. The one capsule doesn't help me any. It doesn't give me the dosage. You should never give a medication without an actual milligrams, milliliters, micrograms, some type of dosage, even units. So that's an error right here with that. The actual um, frequency is three times a day before meals, so that's okay there. Um, the PO is the actual route, and obviously the patient is here. Now, if you look at the next one where there's a problem, if you notice the allergies in the red across the bottom, it says aspirin, penicillin, and triple antibiotic ointment. When you get ready to give meds, you should always scan through and look at all the medications, not just the ones you're going to give for your time. Scan through and look at all of them. As it turns out, this triple antibiotic ointment applied to the um, lesion on the left thumb, BID, at 9 o'clock. Well, the drug is there. The actual applying part is talking about the skin topical, so that's there. It tells me how often to do it, and there's not a real strength with this one, but there is a time. But my major issue is allergies. They're allergic to this. So how in the world did that get on this page? So what you want to do when you find something like that is take and DC it completely off, discontinue it, pull it out of the drawer. If you're on a unit dose or if you're on a blister pack system, not on a Pixis, pull it out of the drawer and alert the prescriber, the physician, nurse practitioner, and also alert pharmacy. So those are some errors that you can find on an MAR that you need to be cognitive of and always be looking for when you're giving medications. Now, I just want to show you and long-term care, we use what they call blister packs. These are blister packs where you'll have usually a 31-day to 32-day um, dose. They send them down once a month, so you pop them out. These are used. I, I had brought from the long-term care facility I go to, so you could see what a blister pack is. Now, acute care does not use blister packs. The patients come and go too fast. They would be destroying more medicines than they were giving. These are unit dose right here, what I've got. These are things you'll see in the pixels that you'll pull out, or maybe if you just have a regular patient drawer like we're going to be using in just a little bit. This is a unit dose. That means I open it up, I give the medication, I toss these away. Okay. Now, what I'd like to do now is to go and start the actual skill, the actual medication administration skill that we're going to be doing. Those were just some preliminaries that I think you need to know about before we actually get started. When you get ready to give your medications, you always want to go and take the MAR and compare it to the doctor's orders on the chart. 
What you're going to look for there, number one, is allergies to make sure what's on the MAR is what they actually have on the doctor's orders chart. You want to also look at their history, you know a little bit about the history. If you've got someone that has an allergy to some type of aspirin or NSAIDs, then obviously we would not want to see them on the MAR. So look at their history, look at their allergies. You may also need to look at their lab work if you're going to take and give Lasix maybe. That has a tendency to take and pull off your potassium. So you want to also check your lab for the potassium. If I was going to give Dilantin, I want to check my levels in the lab section. So there's certain things you need to check. If I'm going to give beta blockers or calcium channel blockers or I'm going to give digoxin, I would need to look at vital signs from previous shifts. And then I would also need to go to the room and check blood pressure and pulse before I gave those. So with what we're getting ready to do now, I would not even start without having gone and checked my labs, went and checked to see if I need to give um, vital signs, get a pulse and a blood pressure. And in this case, I know I'm going to give digoxin, so I'm going to take and get a pulse, an apical pulse. And I already have that, and my pulse rate was 64, so I know I'm okay to give that medicine. Okay? Now you want to come on over. You've got through with the chart, and you've assessed all of those areas. You want to come over, and you want to take and wash your hands because what you're getting ready to do now is go and gather up your supplies and then go to the med cart. Okay, so now I'm at the med cart. I have my cups that I need. Okay. My water pitcher with my water. So we're ready to get started with this. I'm going to unlock the medicine cabinet here so I can actually get into it. And the medicine cabinet, by the way, should stay locked all the time when you're not standing right at it. And you should never leave medications on the cart. So in this case, we've got an actual drawer that has Mary Johnson's name on the MAR's Mary Johnson also. And hopefully when we get to the room, her armband's going to say Mary Johnson, and she will agree that her name is Mary Johnson. When you're dealing with acute care, though, you'll have to do two ID checks. The armband, and most of the time, most places like the date of birth. Long-term care, we don't have armbands, but we have pictures that identify the resident. All right, now the first thing I see here is I need to take and give Practi-Ditch. So I want to find that and get that out. With my Practi-Ditch, what I'm going to do is look for the name of the medication, look for the strength, and then look for the expiration date to make sure that it has not expired. And remember when I was talking about ditch, it says practi ditch 0.25 milligrams, tap, PO daily, hold if the pulse is less than 60. Remember, I got a 64. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in my column under the 8, 16, 9 o'clock. That's today's date when I'm actually giving the meds. I'm going to take and leave this here. When I pulled it out, I'm going to lay it down after I did all my checks. The next thing I have to give okay, looks like Robitussin. I pull my Robitussin out. It says Robitussin cough syrup, and it looks like they want me to give 50 milligrams per 5 milliliters, and I'm to give a PO after meals. Okay? Now, the other thing I want to look for is my expiration date. It expires to February 2021. Got a long expiration date. Okay? So I set that to the side. Now, sometimes if you have a lot of medications to give, people like to put a little dot as they go along in their column to let them know they've got the medicine out, and you certainly can do that. Now, my third 9 o'clock was that triple antibiotic ointment, but remember, we had an allergy to it. So the first thing I want to do is pull that out of their drawer, and I want to send it back to pharmacy. And I want to discontinue it here so someone don't come along and accidentally give it and not notice those allergies. So always, always, always check your allergies. And you want to check, if you have six pages of MARs, you want to check every page. Okay? So we're going to leave this pulled out. I'm going to send this down to pharmacy. Okay. So it looks like I don't have anything else to give. So now that was my first check. Now I'm going to go and do my second check. Okay. My ditch oxen, 0.25 milligram tabs, PO, daily. My heart rate was 64, so that's perfectly all right to give. I've already checked it a second time. I'm going to put it in my cup. I am not going to open it until I get to the patient's bedside. Now, if you're dealing with blister packs, obviously we got to pop those and open those right at the cart. We can't take the whole cart of the pack in the room. Now, the next thing I need to give is Robitussin cough syrup, 50 milligrams per 5 milliliter, and it's PO, and, and it's before, um, after meals. 
um, what I was getting ready to tell you was that any suspension you would need to shake, this is not a suspension, so you do not need to shake it. But anything that's considered a suspension, you will need to shake. And what I'm doing is getting an alcohol prep ready to wipe off the edge when I pour. Okay, now, you can either set this here and pour from this way, or you can hold it up to eye level and pour. I usually do better if I hold it towards the light. Alrighty. And I want to wipe it off so it's not so sticky when you put it back away. Now, since I had to pour this here, I'm going to have to do my third check here. I'm not going to be able to take all of this down to the room and then bring it back to the car. So I'm going to go ahead and do my third check, Robitussin. It's 50 milligrams per milliliter, per 5 milliliter, and the expiration date's good. Okay? So we'll go ahead and put that in here. Now, there's another one that I have here. It's called the Beta Optic. And the thing about eye drops, y'all, be extremely careful that it says optic or eye or bombing somewhere on it. You don't want to put an otic, which is for the ear, and an eye. So always make sure it says that. This one here says beta optic, and it's going to be solution, one drop to the right eye, and it looks like they want to do it twice a day. Okay? So now, as I go through here, I don't see any other medications. I'm going to check my beta optics ophthalmic solution one more time to get my second check in and definitely looking for that ophthalmic on it so now there we've got our medicines I don't see any more I don't get a second check on them I'm going to get a little tray sometimes you'll have these trays and sometimes you won't they're nice if you have them okay you can go ahead and pour water if you don't think you have any in the room Now, as I get down to the room, I've got some decisions to make. I've got a PO, I've got an I, and I've got a cough medicine. I would take and give my PO first, then I would follow off with my cough medicine. With cough medicine, ask them not to drink for about five to 10 minutes after they've had it. And then I would follow with the eye drop. Sometimes the eye drops will make their vision blurry or burn, and you don't want to give that first and then try to get them to take all the rest of the medications. Okay. All right, so we're, everything's here ready to go. I'm going to put this back in the cart. I'm going to lock it up. Okay. And either you carry the key on you or in your pocket like it, or some of them have a little wristband you can carry it on. Okay. This is going to be sent to pharmacy, and I'm not going to leave it laying on my cart because I'm afraid someone might come by that's confused or something and use it. So this is going down to pharmacy. Now, we're all ready to go. We're going down to the room. Knock, knock. Hi. Hey, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. How's things going this morning? Good. Good. Mrs. Johnson, I've got your 9 o'clock medicines this morning. I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with what you've been getting, but what we've got here is your digoxin, which is for your heart. It helps your heart to okay. be stronger. A little bit uh, slow, but stronger that's to a get new the one. blood out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if you'd like, I can get you some information on it later on this that morning. That would be helpful, thanks. Okay, very good. Because we'll teach you how to count your pulse before you go home. Oh, good. Okay. Um, the eye drop you've been taking for your glycoma, I think, mm -hmm. for quite some time. And we'll put that in your right eye. Okay. And then you had requested some cough medicine, mm -hmm. so I've got some cough medicine here for you. Yep. Okay, with the cough medicine, I'll give that after I give you a pill. If you could wait to drink about five to ten minutes. Okay. okay? Now, let me just check the arm band. Mm -hmm. And I'm checking it against for MAR, Mrs. Johnson. And could you tell me your date of birth? Mm -hmm. It's June 9th, 1945. Thank you very much. Okay. The all matches. Very good. Okay. Now, we have some water here. Would that be okay? Sure. Now, are you able to swallow okay? Mm -hmm. you're, you're not having any issues with swallowing no. pills? No, just this little cough. That's all. Okay. And you're okay staying up where you're at? Mm -hmm. You can swallow okay? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to do my third check. Okay. Digiox, 0.25 milligrams. PO, it's daily, and her heart rate was 64, and it needed to be above 60. Okay. Open it up. Mm -hmm. And 
if she wants to keep this, I let them keep it if they want to look their medicines up, or you oh. can just toss it. Or sometimes students will put it in their pockets so they can go home and, and they start a little thing with labels on the meds they give. It's whatever you want to do with it. Okay. Want to wet your mouth first? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Are you okay to take your pill? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if they're not able to take their medicine like she did, you will need to have a spoon. You cannot pick the pills up with your hand, even with gloves on. You take a spoon and put them in her mouth. Um, Jayco and Stay from Long Term Care will nail you in a heartbeat if you touch medicine with your bare hands. And they don't even like for us to do it with gloves on. They usually recommend a spoon. Okay. Now, I'm just going to let you take your own cough medicine. This tastes bad. It does. I'm so sorry. And you need to wait five minutes though, okay? Yeah, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, let you just take a little break and swallow that. Okay. It kind of can take your breath away, can it? Mm-hmm. medicines that we actually have to hold our finger and our nasal lacrimal duct so it doesn't get into our system. Oh, so okay. occasionally you may have a medicine that you may take with your glycoma that they recommend that for. Okay. Okay. Any questions? No. Hey, can I get anything for you? No, I don't think so. I'm fine. Okay. All right. Well, here's your call line back again. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be down probably in about 30 minutes with physical therapy to get you up and get you moving. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Right. If you do need anything, just let me know. Okay. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay. Now what we'll do is go back, and now that we've actually given these, we will take and actually sign them off, because we don't want to sign them off until we give them. So you can come out of the room, and you should sign your medicines off within 30 minutes, preferably just as soon as you walk from the room. So now I'll go ahead and sign my meds off. And all I'm doing is putting my initials here in the 9 o'clock spots. And remember, I DC'd, discontinued, the triple antibiotic ointment. 